Welcome to Wine for Normal People, the podcast for people who like wine, but not the snobbery that goes with it. I'm your host, Elizabeth Schneider, author of the Wine for Normal People book and certified wine dork. This podcast is sponsored by my exclusive and awesome sponsor, Wine Access. I love them so much that I have a wine club with them. 150 bucks, six bottles, four times a year. Coming up, a special shipment. Serge Duray, French wine importer. Many of you have listened to him on the show. He is spectacular. And this shipment is all his wines. Really hard to get wines. That's what Wine Access specializes in. Go to wineaccess.com slash normal. Listen in the middle of the show for more details been drinking a ton of rosé because this show is being recorded in the summer in the northern hemisphere and it is incredibly hot in this summer 2024 and I started to think about what are the grapes in a rosé and what do they each contribute Grenache, Syrah, Mouvedre, these are the main grapes that are usually in at least a Rhone or Provence rosé. But there's one grape that is almost always included that no one ever talks about, and that is Senso. Actually, nobody even really agrees on how to spell it, so some people spell it C I N S A U. L-T, and some people spell it C-I-N-S-A-U-T with no L. It is not really even thought of enough so that people can agree on how to spell it. I usually spell it with the L, so I'm going to continue to go with that. Senso is a grape you probably never heard of, but if you drink rosé, you drink it all the time, especially if you drink French rosé. It's Not well known, but it is essential. And it's also a component of some pretty famous red wines. There's about 50,000 acres or 20,234 hectares of the variety in the world. We think there's a lot not reported. It is super common across the south of France. It has a long history in many places. It's considered an ancient grape, but it has dispersed to the new world. And that's probably where the greatest champions of this grape live and work. That is where the renewed interest in Senso is coming from. There is a trend towards lighter wines, climate change, resistant varieties, heritage varieties. Senso has all of this. And although we don't see that much varietal Senso, I firmly believe it's going to become more common. And because of that, it is important for you to at least have some awareness of this grape, which is why I am doing a great mini series on it. It seems like right now, this is a super obscure one. But I promise you that with climate change, both Senso and Carignan are going to play a bigger role in some of the regions that you know and love today as they warm up. And if I need any further proof of that, I can tell you that this grape thrives in North Africa. So we'll get into all of that detail. Before we go any further, though, every week I thank the patrons because they legit make this podcast go. Without Patreon and without Wine Access, I could not do this. I need to thank everybody who has contributed Ferenc T, Ian S, Nancy, Ben B, Melissa B, Francis W, Caroline B, Bill S, Coyote K, Fabiola L, Jessica M, Garrett W, Marvin W, Dallas, Michael C, John B, Levi C, Melanie Z, Rachel M, Robert Q, Colin, Chloe F, Jackie, Victoria, Karen G, John, and Amelia L. Thank you so much for becoming patrons. There's been a lot more people joining lately, and I just want to thank you so much. And once you log on to Patreon, you'll see years and years of content. You know, you might think I don't write, I don't write a blog. Nope, that's not right. It's all on the site. Tons of stuff. Weekly tips. There's about 200 weekly tips, which are basically blog posts. We do a weekly discussion question. I do detailed show notes for all of the current shows. 
there is a huge archive of material in there, videos and things that you won't find anywhere else. So Patreon, 22 bucks a year, the price of a bottle of wine. If you value the podcast, please think about it. Patreon.com slash wine for normal people. And of course, you could take wine for normal people classes and there is the rosé class coming up. So if this sparks your interest and you want to see where Senso plays its role, I'll definitely point that out when we taste the Provence rosé, although we'll be tasting a number of other rosés to see the differences between them. You can find those classes at winefornormalpeople.com slash classes. Back to Senso. What is the history of this grape? I don't have any DNA evidence for you. It's an ancient variety. Either it originated in the Aero in the Languedoc in southern France. It also could have come via the Phoenicians or the Greeks. We just don't know. I think it's very interesting as I do these shows on Sicily. and we, Everyone says that these grapes were brought by the Phoenicians or the Greeks, but in Greece, there's no trace of it. So we have this conception that Greeks brought all of these grapes. I'm just not sure if that's necessarily true. That's something I would like to explore at some point. If somebody's an expert in that, contact me. I would like to talk about that further. All right. So the name Senso comes from Sank So, Sank, like five buckets. And that is because that is how much one vine can yield. One vine creates five buckets of grapes, Sank So. It has been grown in the south of France for centuries, at least four centuries, probably more, in the Languedoc Roussillon, in Provence, and in the southern Rhone. And it's spread to other places from there. It has been exported all over the world, especially where France colonized. So we see it in Corsica, North Africa, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia. This is a grape, as I mentioned, that thrives in hot weather. In the past, when bigger, bolder wines were the trend, we saw Senso being ripped out in mass in the Languedoc, in Rhone, in Provence. In the late 1970s, there were 50,586 hectares or 125,000 acres in France. Today, about 20,234 hectares or 50,000 acres. So a significant portion of Senso has been ripped out. I am going to guess that a lot of that probably needed to be ripped out. So I'm not necessarily saying, oh, it's a shame, but some of it was old vine and high quality or could have been high quality. And it is a shame that much of it was ripped out, especially as we see a changing climate and we very much are going to need this grape in the future. As part of the history, it's really important also to mention South Africa. Since so, when it first came, probably in the mid-1800s, for some reason was called Hermitage, which makes no sense because Hermitage of the Northern Rhone only grows Syrah, and since so has really very little in common, or nothing really, in common with Syrah. So interestingly, they called it Hermitage in the Cape Winelands. It's been around for a century or two. It was completely disregarded until it was crossed with Pinot Noir, which actually it has a lot in common with, to make Pinot Taj. Why isn't it Pinotage like Meritage, right? Meritage is a Bordeaux blend that's grown in California. They call it Meritage because it's merit plus heritage. Pinot Taj is Aj because it is from Hermitage. That's where we get the name Pinotage from Hermitage. Interesting little factoid. We'll talk about South Africa later. In the vineyard, this grape is mid-ripening. It has tight and large clusters, and the skins don't have really strong pigment, and they don't have strong tannins. So if you want any tannin out of this grape, you have to macerate it for a really long time. There are over 21 clones approved in France. The grape has a terrible reputation for being high-yielding and poor quality. Although it is completely convenient and great because it's easy to pick by machine, that then means, oh, well, if it's easy to pick by machine, then that lowers its status as well. This grape cannot win. Yeah, it's got a reputation for high yield and poor quality, but the two go hand in hand. If you have high yields, you have poor quality. So, of course, if you're growing something and you're growing it to the maximum, you're going to get poor quality and low flavor concentration. So maybe if you didn't have high yields, even if the grape could have high yields, you would have better quality. And that's exactly what they're finding. So if you have good canopy management, good pruning, well-drained soils, and especially 
poor, dry, and fertile soils. So it does really well on a soil like schist, but it does not do well on limestone, which holds on to water a little more. If it's grown on limestone, it has something called chlorosis sometimes, which is a nutrient deficiency. But if you grow it on these poor, dry, and fertile soils, it's going to stop the vigor and then it will be naturally less productive. Again, a lot of this has to do with the treatment of the grape, not necessarily the grape itself. Since so is, without a doubt, a warm climate grape that thrives in dry climates It is not susceptible to drought. It can go very, very long periods in hot weather without water. It can always make a crop. And this is why for so many years it has survived in the Southern Rhone, in the Languedoc, and in Provence, where it can get very hot. This grape can make up for other grapes that suffer in drought. So it is an important part of the blend. Since so actually really needs that dryness because it has a low tolerance for disease. Humidity and lower temperatures can actually be a threat if it rains a lot, since so is going to be the problem. As we get into warmer vintages, since so is going to be so important. It's a grape that even in the hottest conditions is still going to maintain its acidity. It also doesn't ripen to high sugar levels, which is incredible. That means you can have a moderate alcohol, high acid wine growing in a hot climate. That is a very special grape. This is why in warm climates it is added to reds and rosés. And I think it's going to be surprising which reds it's actually added to when I start mentioning them. In Provence, it's always going to make up a portion of rosé because of the lower alcohol levels, because if it's blended with Grenache, which can get to very high alcohol levels and can lose its acidity and doesn't have a lot of natural acidity, Senso is a perfect balancing grape. It is such a great backup dancer. Another problem, not many problems for Senso, but the trunk wood has some issues. It's susceptible to diseases of the wood. Esca is one of them. You type a dieback. If you listen to the podcast with Brian Callahan from Crux Winery in Sonoma, we talked about you type a dieback. And if you're on Patreon, you can see the pictures of you type a dieback and what it looks like. But really, that's pretty much it. It doesn't like rain and it's got some wood diseases that can be controlled. It's not that prone to couleure or poor flower set and not so prone to frost as opposed to Grenache, which has huge problems with poor flower set and poor fruit set. So in cool springs, when Grenache is having problems, you are going to see more Senso in blends because Likely, Senso has made it through and Grenache has had problems and the yields are lower for Grenache, for instance, or some of the other grapes that it's traditionally blended with. If the producers did not tear it out and there are old bush vines, which we are going to find really in the places that like Senso and have concentrated on it a little bit more, what you will have are these small concentrated grapes that don't just have bright cherry and red fruit flavors. We'll talk about the flavors in a second, but have spice and depth. People describe it as meatiness. I don't really see it that way, but it is earthy. Old bush vines, and we're talking even at 20 years, you're starting to get spice. Winemaking, because it is used in blends so much, I can talk about it a bit, but it really depends on what you're going to use it for and, and the proportion in which you're going to use it. But Senso can be light. So I mentioned it's not highly pigmented in the skins. If you have low yields, you have to do a long maceration. That way, you're going to get more color. You're going to get more lush, rich wines that have a little bit of structure or tannin. But the key for Senso is floral wines. And especially for rosé, you want something more delicate. It's used in blends for a very clear reason. Lower sugar level, lower alcohol level than Grenache or Mouved or Syrah, for instance. And in a blend, it's going to moderate potential alcohol. It's going to lift aroma. It is a highly aromatic grape, and it's going to moderate tannin because it does not have high tannin. Often, Senso is less than 15% of a rosé or red blend, but it is absolutely essential. Without Senso, you would not have the balance in the wine. You would not have 
some of the really complex aromas. You wouldn't have some of the interesting flavors. It's not really known, but without it, the wines would be different and worse. Red wines, they have to be careful. They usually use closed top fermenters because it can oxidize. And so it can be oak aged, but like many wines that have beautiful aromas, they're looking more at concrete and amphora and older oak to preserve aroma. And let's talk about what these aromas are. I'm kind of alluding to it. I might as well talk about it. It depends on the place and the blend and frankly, the age of the vines. In the red wines, you're looking for a soft wine, with low tannins. And so it reminds me a little bit of Beaujolais. It reminds me of Pinot. It is a very pretty wine. It's fragrant, ripe red berries, raspberries, strawberries, cherry, and a little bit of warm spice, light to mid-weight, soft tannins, great acidity. That acidity is going to make this wine so bright and fresh. And again, the growing conditions are going to be important. If you have good flavor in the grape, then you're going to have this lightness and this elegance to the wine. If not, it's just going to be bland and boring. In rosé, it's not just those ripe red berry fruits, but also floral notes. And it reads as peach tea leaf notes. You do get that sometimes in the reds as well. It's going to add this beautiful fragrance to Grenache, which is very strong in red berries, Mouved, which is a little earthier, Carignan, which can have decent tannin levels, great acidity, and is used often for color and a little bit less for flavor. And Senso can also lighten up the color. So that's an important part of the rosé blend, especially. And then, of course, in these old vines, as I mentioned, those smoky, spicy notes are going to be prevalent. Let's talk about food, and then we'll get to the regions. Senso is really versatile. I'm going to address not necessarily Senso in a blend, but if you get a Senso on its own, things like roasted vegetables or grilled chicken or pork, mushroom risotto, ratatouille, caponata, those kinds of things. In rosé, if it's a large component, salads, grilled fish, charcuterie, um, garlic. One of the traditional pairings with senso is actually escargot in garlic with butter. I think you could easily replace these snails with pasta and just have garlic and butter, and it will go really nicely with a senso dominant blend. Also, Tex Mex, American Mexican food, paella would be really good with a senso driven rose with that acidity and lifted fragrant aromatics. Nothing too strong because it'll take over the elegance of a good senso. Aging potential. I mean, it's light in tannin, so it's not going to age as long as some others, but it could age five to seven years. This is more of a drink now wine, which is lovely. I don't know if with time that's going to change. Perhaps it will. People have only started really focusing on this grape. So perhaps with time, because it does have good acidity, it can go a little bit longer. But let's be clear, the tannin is not there to support long aging. Where is it grown? It's an important grape in the Languedoc Roussillon in the Southern Rhone. It's also grown in Italy, a little bit in Spain, North Africa. I've mentioned Lebanon, Israel, South Africa. And in the U.S., it has been planted since at least 1867. And then we know in 1885, there's still a vineyard of Senso that people are making wine from. Washington State, Arizona, Texas, a bunch of other places. But let's concentrate on some of the main places France. I want to give a shout out to my friends, Liz Gabay and Ben Burnham, who wrote The Rosés of Southern France. I got lots of great information about Senso from them. If you don't have that book, I highly recommend it. I'm going to ask them to come back on the show and talk about Rosé again, because they're wonderful and they're writing a new book. And I also think it is really important for us to put a focus on rosé because it is a significant wine and something that people really enjoy and drink, and it should be taken more seriously. Anyway, since so is, as I mentioned before, an old grape variety, but it's completely looked down upon, they use it as a stuffer of mass market rosé brands. They grow it for high yields. 
So it's bland and boring, and it's just used as a meh grape. So you'll see it in tons of mass market rosés, and it's not doing what I'm saying it's doing. It might add acidity and lift, but they're not paying attention to any of the great flavors. And that may be, if you notice a difference in rosés, the mass market brands are just stuffing Senso in there so that they can make their Grenache and Syrah and Mved go the distance. But a better producer is actually going to treat Senso better and not use it just to grow it for high yields. I've been in the wine industry for almost 20 years, and I am pretty picky and selective about who I partner with. So I can assure you that Wine Access is the best around. They are my go-to source for the best selection of wines you can't find locally. And they are really where people in the wine industry go to buy their wine. I have loved having the Wine for Normal People Wine Access Wine Club because they are so great to work with. When we do the wine club, I'm trying to give you really classic examples of wines and also new and interesting things that we can source for you that you can't get locally. In your shipment, which is $150 for six bottles four times a year, that includes shipping. You are going to get the story behind each wine in a tasting sheet and tasting videos that I make. And I will explain why I love these wines, what you should be looking for. Go to wineaccess.com slash normal and check out the wine club. If you are not ready to commit to the wine club, go to wineaccess.com slash WFNP, wineaccess.com slash WFNP. And that's going to give you a page of wines that I really love. And it's also going to let Wine Access know that you found out about them through the podcast, which I would really appreciate. Free shipping's included when you spend $150. And they have a buy and hold feature where you have up to 30 days to reach that $150 shipping threshold, wineaccess.com slash normal for the wine club and wineaccess.com slash WFNP to let them know you found out about them through me. Now let's get back to the show. Another place, although we do see it, of course, in Rosé, Provence, it does really well with cold fermentation in stainless steel to make these aromatic, light, fruity wines that are bottled quickly. It's made him Cote de Provence and all of the surrounding regions, Aix-en-Provence, and also Bandol. Bandol is very famed for its rosés, which use Mouved, but they also use a significant portion of Senso. Guess what else uses a significant portion of Senso? Bandol reds. Because Mouved needs the assist. Mouved is tannic. Mouved has real deep flavors. And it can age for a really long time. But if you want some acidity, you have to add Senso to give it some lift. That is incredibly important to think about the role of Senso and how those wines of Bondol likely would not taste the way they did if they didn't have Senso in them. And for Bondol, I'm talking about both the reds and the rosés. Let me say, Senso is used as a blending grape in the Southern Rhone in really famed places like Gigondas, Vaccarat, Costier de Nîmes, and some less well-known appellations like Coteau de Tricastine in Ventoux, in Luberon. Those are big rosé appellations, but they also do use Senso in the reds. Tavel, for those of you who are huge Tavel lovers, we actually just did a patron mini class on Tavel and spent an hour talking about Tavel. Senso is used all the time in Tavel to give lift to the Grenache and the Syrah. And it's used in wines that come from clones that are very small buried. That's what most of Tavel has. Senso is treated better in Tavel, and that's why you get these more concentrated rosés if they have Senso in them. They are not stuffer grapes at all. It's very calculated what they're using in those rosés, those concentrated rosés of Tavel, which I know so many of you love. The shocking thing is that Senso is used in almost every Chateau Neuf de Pop blend. Probably 95% of Chateau Neuf de Pop has some proportion, even if it's 1% of Senso. Chateau Neuf de Pop is an excellent area for Senso because it has these big stones. It is warm. It's really well-drained soils. It's perfect for the grape. And 
It moderates potential alcohol, adds that perfume. We talked about the floral and berry aromatics. It calms the tannins of the Syrah and the Mouved. It is taking down the alcohol of the Grenache. It is adding some acidity. Very important. It is the fourth most planted red grape in Chateau neuf de pape It's a distant fourth after Grenache, Syrah, and Mouvenne. 2.6% of the total. And there are some wines that are 100% Senso coming out of Chateau neuf So it is respected in the most famed appellation of the Southern Rhone. In Languedoc, Senso has always been used as this bulk workhorse grape, and they do have entry-level single varietal Senso or Senso-dominated rosé blends, the Paydoc rosés. The problem is they're light and watery. The reputation is that Senso in the Languedoc makes really cheap rosés. Now, there are some people now thinking, I don't want to make rosé because people think that rosé from Languedoc is cheap. So instead, I'm going to make a Blanc de Noir. Blanc de Noir is marketed and sold as white wines made from red grapes. They are effectively, frankly, rosé without the skin maceration. And what they've been finding is that they can charge more. Most Blanc de Noir are Senso or Grenache. If you find one, it could very well be Blanc de Noir Senso. From the Languedoc. Still, as Liz and Ben cite in their book, Senso has amazing potential. Languedoc could be doing so much more with it, but unfortunately, the prices for Senso are 10% lower than Grenache or blends. So if you have a Senso rose, even though it could be stunning on its own in the Languedoc, it's going to be worth less to the producers. That means they have less incentive to grow it. There is a new generation of winemakers popping up in the Languedoc that want lighter, fresher styles. They are looking again at Senso and thinking the Senso dominant blends may be the way to go in some of these warmer sites, especially with climate change and especially with people not wanting these heavy lumbering wines. If that is true, eventually they're going to make the leap, but people have not really done that. In terms of red wines coming out of the Languedoc, you can look for old bush vines in Minervois. And there are some single varietal wines, but mostly only available in the Languedoc locally. Those are exciting things coming out of the Languedoc from Senso. It's just kind of slow to make it out of the country and people are not 100% sold on it yet. We'll move to Italy. This blew me away. I'm so mad that I didn't do this podcast before I went to Sicily because guess what? Senso is on Mount Etna. Senso masquerades under the name of Gracau or Bracau, and it is identical to Senso. It is pre-phylloxera. We do know that it was cited at least in 1696. This is an old variety that grows on Mount Etna. Also, You can find this grape in Puglia. It's been growing in Puglia since at least the 19th century under the name Otto Vionello. It's only about 126 acres or 51 hectares. And there is a DOC or dock dedicated to it. Estoni Otto Vionello DOC in Puglia. It's a red wine that must contain a minimum of 85% Otto Vionello. It can have a maximum of 15% Malvasia Nera, Negromaro, and some other local grapes. Only about 2,000 cases are made a year. But if you happen to go to Puglia, you can try Senso from Ostuni. Spain, you know, I tried to find more information about it. It was just mentioned that it is called Sinso, S-I-N-S-O. That's Senso. But it's also called Samso, which is super confusing because that is one of the names for Carignan in Priorat and in Catalonia. But the grape is mainly grown in Catalonia, you know, around Barcelona on the eastern shore. It's not very widely grown. North Africa, I've already mentioned Morocco. Senso is the leading grape variety in terms of production levels. There's also a lot grown in Algeria and Tunisia. These were French protectorates or colonies. So, of course, this is going to make sense that this grape was exported down from the Languedoc and from the Rhone and from Provence into these warmer areas. The grape is extremely tolerant of heat and dry climate, so it works there. 
a little bit in Chile, in Itata Valley down in the south. There's some old vine senso on granite soils. It does quite well. And then Australia. Senso has probably been in the ground since the days of James Busby. It is rarely bottled alone. Again, it's always been a blending grape, but it has incredible heat resistance. So hot and dry climates will make nice wines with acidity if you blend in a little bit of Senso. In warmer zones like Barossa and especially McLaren Vale, which is really the key place for Senso right now, and Rutherglen as well in Victoria, you are going to find that people are taking a renewed interest in Senso and look for more interesting things to come out of Australia. And hopefully people won't go back to the attitude that a 1978 wine guide described Senso as used mostly in South Australia to lend mediocrity to otherwise good wine. So harsh. So harsh. Poor Senso. So we don't know how much is in Australia because it's funny enough, Australia keeps track of everything, but apparently the National Survey of Vineyards didn't itemize it. So it's anyone's guess, but there is some Senso enough to make a comment about it. There is a little bit of varietal Senso that's being made. If you are in Australia, look for Brash Higgins, Rusden, Showbrook wines, they make varietal Senso. Also, if you are in Australia and you see the names Oleade Noir, Blue Imperial, and Black Prince, those are also names for Senso. And that's because of the color of the grape skin, this dark color. Now, those are important areas for Senso, but the three really impassioned countries are Lebanon, California, and South Africa. Lebanon, in the mountains of the Becca Valley, you have a really distinct climate. And producers have found that Senso, especially when from old vines, has incredible potential here. And many people are using it and are taking another look at it. The Becca Valley has high altitude, lots of sun, sometimes snow, not during the summertime, but the vines can go into dormancy, cool nights, and huge diurnal temperature swings. Senso is fine with the heat, but it does nicely if you have this long ripening period where you're having very cool nights and very hot days. Senso is not going to wither in the heat, and then it will do nicely in the evening where it can shut down and maintain its acidity. Here you'll get more round textures, maybe the acidity will be a little bit lower, but plum-like notes and cherries and strawberries with dried herbs. Really a distinct style that is different from what you'll find elsewhere. Some producers to look for that make Senso or Senso blends, Messiah Senso Rosé. Chateau Moussard, the very, very famous, probably the most famous producer in Lebanon, in their flagship red blend, it is made with Cabernet Sauvignon, Senso and Syrah. So it is seen as something that has status and is of high quality. Domaine de Torel, Senso Old Vines, another one to look for. Again, Lebanon thinks of Senso as something of high quality or high enough quality to put in really good blends. In California, I mentioned already, we know that, that Senso was here since at least 1867, but The oldest Senso vines in the world are found in Lodi, California at the Bechtel Vineyards, which was planted in 1886, used for blending. But today, Turley wine cellars and Berrichino make varietal wines out of this vineyard. Pretty cool. Senso was actually called Black Malvoisie and blended with Zinfandel back in the day when it was first introduced and strangely called Claret. We have no idea why there's no Cabernet in there, no Merlot. There's nothing to do with Bordeaux, but they combined Senso and Zinfandel and called it Claret. Today, it is called Senso. 1990, there were 90 acres or 36 hectares in California. It was still being called Black Malvoisie, and most of it was planted in the Central Valley. Now, today, there's about 100 acres or 40 hectares in California, and it is split equally between the Central Valley, that would include Lodi, 
The Central Coast, Paso Robles has a bunch of it. The North Coast, we see it in Dry Creek Valley and some other scattered areas. And the Sierra Foothills region, that would be Amador County, El Dorado County, things like that. Not a whole lot of sun so, but the old vine stuff is interesting and people are taking another look as it gets warmer. In California, you'll find spiciness, lots of violet notes, those violet floral notes, black tea. And again, that lower or medium alcohol, lower tan and higher acidity, medium bodied wines. Very lovely. If you're looking for some producers besides Turley or Burricino, Hatcher makes a Senso Rosé. Frick in the Dry Creek Valley makes a Senso. Randall Graham and his partnership with Gallo has the language of yes. That's a big hulking winery. So even though I like Randall Graham, I wouldn't buy it, but you can. Preston Vineyards in Sonoma in the Dry Creek as well. And Tablas Creek also has started to make a varietal wine. Arizona, Texas, Washington, there's pockets of Senso all over the U.S. I will close with South Africa. Senso was the original workhorse grape of the South African wine industry. It came from France in the mid-1800s because it could handle the heat and the dryness around Cape Town and make huge yields of large, juicy grapes. And it was really looked down on. It was at one point the most planted grape in the winelands, making light-colored, acidic wines. In 1925, Senso was crossed with Pinot by Abraham Isaac Perold to create Pinotage at the University of Stellenbosch. As I mentioned, that Aj, the Taj, is from Hermitage. So it is Pinotage, Pinot Noir, and Hermitage, Pinotage. Although, again, since so, Hermitage, don't get it. 1970s, we start to see this trend moving out of the preference for lighter colored wines and into dark, rich reds, especially in the 80s. At this point, who needs Senso? If you want dark, rich reds that are lower in acidity, Senso is a loser if that's what you're looking for. So it stopped being planted in the 70s. Today, there's 4,200 acres or 1,700 hectares in South Africa. It is pretty important here. And we are seeing a resurgence of producers taking an interest in Senso, fruit forward, lowish alcohol, especially for South Africa, modest tannins. I'd want to bring up one producer that piqued my interest because they do work a lot with Senso. And I had a bunch of the Senso in their line. Nate Village, I may not be saying that right, but I'll put it in the show notes. It is focused on making wine from Senso. They do make other things, but they are focused on Senso. The story is really, really interesting. So Alex Milner graduated from Stellenbosch University, and he was touring a farm that happened to have a big amount of Senso. And he asked the grower, like, what do you do with the Senso? And the grower said, well, we just sell it to big hulking wineries, and they use it for stuffer grapes. And Alex Milner said, well, can I have some? Can I buy some to experiment? He was one of five people at this point making a varietal since so he was the first real serious one and made these light, fruity, acidic, yet really terroir driven since so if you try the different blocks that he offers, Simonsburg, Parle, Svartland, Stellenbosch, you are going to have something completely different. What he has said or what has been posited about Senso is that the character of the grape has been blended away. So we don't even know what it could achieve, but it may be important for us to start looking at this again because this is a great climate change grape. We know that Senso is starting to take off in South Africa as a varietal wine because prices are starting to rise and more producers are taking an interest. So we have Badenhorst in Svartland and Bozeman Family Wines, the Blacksmith, Lewin Kiel Family Vineyards, and like I said, Nata Village, which I think is spectacular. It's available in the U.S. and in other places, and it's only like between $20 and $30. They're not very expensive, and they are available, so you can order them online, and I'm sure that they're available elsewhere. Super interesting wines, and I would encourage you to seek out some of these different Senso just to see what they taste like. Even the Turley, which is Turley is usually pretty expensive, it's about $27. It's not really all that expensive. I like to feature these kinds of grapes because although 
They are not well respected. We could look at Karen Yan and say the same thing. They are vital, not just to blends and things like that, but they are going to become increasingly important as we look at climate change and look for ways to continue to enjoy drinking what we like and maybe with an assist from a grape, a little bit more of an assist from a grape like Senso, and new things that perhaps we're going to want to drink because they're going to provide the acidity that is so needed and lower alcohol to give balance to the wines. That is another one in the Books of the Grape mini series. I hope I've convinced you that Sense Soap was worthwhile. I think it's important to know about. And like I said, I see Sense Soap playing a bigger role on the horizon. And I'm pretty excited about some of the varietal Sensos that I've had. I think you'll like them if you like some of these lighter style ones. It's summertime. Try some of the reds if you haven't tried them. And then also as you're Looking at your rosés, go on the internet and see what the percentage of Senso is. You'll be surprised. Most of the wines from southern France will have Senso. Most of the Tavelles, certainly all of the Cote de Rhone and the Provence wines have it. And then also in your Chateau Neuf, I know it seems strange, but it's there. It's there if you look for it. That is Senso. And with that, this has been another episode of Wine for Normal People. Thank you so much for listening, and we will catch you next time. <laughs>